Hey, what is going on you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape and welcome to a brand new loot video for you all today. So today, or tonight as it is over here, I bring you guys loot from 10 hours of Serachnus. Now the goal for this video is to make as much profit as possible as well as obtain as many elite clue scrolls as possible. And if I am lucky enough, hopefully we will obtain the pet. All right, so I did use the wiki strategy guide in order to kind of pick out my gear for this video and everything that you're seeing on uh, my character is basically the best in slot gear that I had for this. Although the one thing that I didn't see on the wiki was using the fang here. Uh, usually it was just showing other weapons but I wanted to try it out anyway because it's been working so well even post nerf. So I did try it out and then later on in the video I did a kill with a bludgeon and I gotta be honest I really think the fang worked much better for me so I just uh, stuck with it this whole video minus a few bludgeon kills. And a Alongside the gear, I was also bringing the Archaeus Spellbook. That, alongside the Book of the Dead, I was able to resurrect a skeleton, which would essentially be damaging Seracnus the whole entire time I was fighting him. And then I also used the spell Death Charge as soon as he was about to die or midway through the kill, so that I would get special attack back after every single time I cast this spell. The cooldown is pretty relatable to uh, the amount of time that it takes to kill Seracnus, so I would say that almost every kill, if not every other, other kill, uh, I was getting extra special attack back, so that was really nice for the Dragon Claws. Made these kills much faster, so I would say I did this pretty efficiently, pretty effectively, you know, and I really just wanted to see that pet. I haven't been here, as you can see shortly, I did achieve a few combat tasks. That kind of proves I haven't been here in quite some time. Uh, I think I did 50 kills when this first came out, and then a few weeks later, of course, I did loot from a thousand, and unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to get the pet in that video, so that was my main focus for this one, and also so just kind of to see how much uh, profit I was going to be looking at per hour here. Since it has been a few years and I didn't even bother watching my old Seracnus video because I just kind of wanted to be surprised once again by the hourly loot that I was getting, I gotta be honest, I was very happy with the results. Uh, even right away I could tell that I was going to be making a lot of money from this video. I noticed that sometimes I would get one drop and then alongside it in the same loot pile I would get a second drop and that would be a grubby key which is a rate of 1 to 15 and it's a current price of 38k. And the same thing was happening when I was receiving these giant sacks. Uh, these are egg sacks full of red spider eggs, and they are worth 73k. So it was awesome just to see those two drops alongside just the normal drop table. And of course, the Elite Clue Scroll, which is what Seracnus is mainly known for, because the Elite rate is 1 in 60 here, which is really good compared to other things in the game. I think the only next best thing would be Barrows or Lava Dragons. And obviously, Seracnus a little bit safer than Lava Dragons, and I'd say it's probably better money than Barrows, although that could be debatable. Might have to do a 10 hour of Barrows video soon, but I think that'll probably be like my fifth Barrows video, so we'll see if there's any demand for that. As goes for this video though, there really wasn't too much inspiration behind it. Uh, what gave me the idea to do it was my recent 10 hour of Temple Spider grind that I did on my Iron Man. Just south of Temple Spiders is where you can find Seracnus, as I showed in the intro, so I just kind of wanted to come back to this box it had been some time and I'm also I think 4,000 kills dry of a spider pet over there in the wilderness at Venonatus so you know if you can't get the Venonatus pet this is the next best thing or maybe it's better depending on you know your preference but yeah Seracnus is the mother of the temple spiders it's a mid-level boss uh, it's, of course it's in the Forthos dungeon and she can't be killed as part of a spider slayer task I guess I take back calling Seracnus a man earlier so forgive me for that you do need a slash weapon or a knife to access this part of the dungeon but chances are the weapon you're using should be good enough to get across the web But if you want to be extra efficient make sure to bring a wilderness sword It kind of makes me laugh that you know people do that But I mean hey it will save you some time There's nothing wrong with uh, saving some time This spider was released in the game July 4th So once again I'm pretty sure that was the same day the temple spiders came out I feel like I just said that uh, a couple days ago anyway So yeah it's pretty awesome The max hit is 31 You're always going to want to be praying range when she's not next to you And then once you get next to her, which shouldn't take more than a second or two, that is when you start praying melee again. It's a very easy boss to learn, and it's kind of up to you if you want to kill the small spider spawns. I personally decided to tank them as they hit me, but some people do kill them, so that is uh, completely optional. I just found that it was easier to just focus on Seracnus. But speaking of Seracnus, we do have our first rare drop coming in. This is the lovely and the newest addition to the collection log, Jar. 
Star of Eyes. Very cool. I gotta say, I was not expecting this so early on. It is 1 in 2,000. That is pretty much the only rare here, other than the pet, which is Sriracha. And that is 1 in 3,000. So hopefully, we are gonna get that in this video. I got a good feeling, but I, you know, you never know here. RNG can be on your side or not on your side. It just depends. I did try to keep this video a little shorter than my Corrupted Gauntlet one. I felt like I kind of dragged that one out, so I tried to make this shorter, just showing you guys the hour increments and every 50 or 100 kills or so, or any drop that really stood out. I kind of like to show the first 20 kills or so, just so you get a good idea of the drops that you can expect from this boss, but if you just go to the wiki, that will save you some time and you can see all of the drops that you can expect. But of course, I you know hope you still watch the whole video anyway. I mean, you know, informing people, entertaining. You got a little bit of everything in this series. I did mention earlier on that I did try a bludgeon out for about an inventory. I think those clips have already been shown, and I just wasn't too impressed. My kill speed didn't seem any faster, but honestly, it didn't seem too much slower, but that's kind of why I just stuck with the Fang. I was also told on my King Black Dragon video that I should have used the Fang over the Dragon Hunter's Lance, but I still don't know if that uh, if that's true, if it's better there. But either way, it worked out really well at Seracnus, so just putting that out there if you want to try it out yourself. Unfortunately, I did have to turn this Elite Clue Scroll in for a Master Clue because I was given the Pyromancer and Straw Hat Step once again, and I just don't see it worth it uh, to go back to Wintertot in order to do that Elite Step. So anytime I do encounter that step, I'm just going to turn it into a Master. So we'll always see Elite Clues and Master Clues uh, in these videos, chances are, in case uh, you forgot, I can't complete a fighter torso step uh, with the master clues still. I have yet to uh, receive the fighter torso back after losing it so long ago, and unfortunately the elite clue that I couldn't complete and the master that I transformed it into on step number four, I did need a fighter torso. So, I dropped it. And I know, I know someone's gonna be upset about that, but I will make you a promise, and I'm, I'm pretty good for promises most of the time, so I will say that if I do encounter the fighter torso step again in the future, no matter what loot video it is, I will get a fighter torso, and you'll see that in that future video. Go figure, the two masters I've dropped so far in the past couple weeks, uh, one of them included in this video, might have been the one that had the third age, or the dog inside of it, but you know, you never know, so I don't know, let's, let's try not to think too much about that. One thing I did that is important to mention for the price check of 10 hours is that every time I got an elite clue scroll, I would pause the timer, so any elite that was done did not affect the GP per hour here, as it normally would for anyone else, I just felt like I didn't want to, you know, pause it, because maybe that elite might take a minute to do, or a couple minutes, so I figure, why not just kill Seracnus for 10 hours straight, and then the elites will be a little bit extra content at the end. And speaking of extra, we did receive an extra jar of eyes, 1 in 2,000, the drop rate hasn't changed, but where's my spider? You know, I, ju I just want that spider. So, you know, two jars in the bank, as you can see here, the uh, bank tab is growing, 20 grubby keys and five elites, don't even pay attention to that master. And yeah, I mean, at this point in time, I really was enjoying this boss. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out what video I wanted to do on my Iron Man. I ended up doing like two hours of Twisted Banshees. Then I looked at my last Twisted Banshee video and I said to myself, you know, why am I doing this again? So of course I packed my bags and I went to Aberrant, uh, oh no, not Aberrant Spectres, uh, Abyssal Demons. So you guys will see 10 hours of Abyssal Demons tomorrow night. Pretty awesome video. Happy with my luck in that one. So you guys will, uh, see all about that tomorrow, and it worked uh, great alongside Seracnus. Seracnus is a little click intensive, no doubt about it. You gotta be pretty quick with that prey range to prey melee, and I was also summoning thralls and using my imbued heart as well as death charge, so a lot was going into it as well as my dragon claw specs, so uh, you know, uh, not really AFK by any means, but really a quick boss to kill. Great, reliable drop table that even if you don't get a rare, well, there really isn't a rare here that's worth GP, so I mean, you're, you're always gonna be making consistent one mil plus an hour here. And that's not really a spoiler, that's just kind of common knowledge at this point. And the best thing about this is it is multi-combat, so you can bring your friends or your clan and you can get it killed much quicker. Alongside that, you don't need to be maxed, and uh, as I mentioned before, you don't need best in slot gear. I, I actually ran into quite a few level 90s that were wearing dragon or torags and they were using a cudgel, which is also a pretty good item to use here. So yeah, it's a great med level boss and it's even greater to kill as a high level. Well, there is a 10 minute recap of my 10 hour experience at Seracnus, ladies and gentlemen, and now it is time for the price check. Let's go ahead and price check the coin stack, the herbs and seeds, the runes, weapon poisons, and uh, other things. All the grubby keys really helping out that price.
price check as well as the red dragon hide and everything does come out to be 8.3 million gp that is awesome uh looking at the next price check we have two jars and 25 sacks as well as a decent amount of gems uh i wouldn't say those mithril arrows are worth picking up really but i just wanted to you know make this bank tab look a little cleaner and cooler and this price check does come out to be 6.7 mil the jars are not worth as much as other jars in the game about 150k a piece but overall 10 hours of Seracna is still netting me 15 mil profit 473 kills 1.5 mil an hour no pet but two jars. All right, now we're opening up all of the Elite Clue Scrolls, and as you can see so far, pretty uh, decent rewards, a little average here and there, but most of them were over 100K, and to my surprise, the last one was a Mimic. This was my first ever time receiving a Mimic from an Elite Clue Scroll, and I actually didn't know that you could get a Mimic from an Elite Clue Scroll, so maybe it'll bring me luck. We weren't too lucky with the uh, first batch of Elite Clues. But to wrap up this video, before we look at the Rune Light Loot Tracker, we uh, ended up getting the worst reward from the Mimic. So thank you for the extra 15 Manta Rays. I will never use them, but I will sell them. So yeah, not the uh, best luck from the clues, but honestly, I'm so used to it. That is all right. Uh, Serac, this made me all of the GP, so I have nothing to complain about. A truly great experience. I loved making this video. I love Serac. This definitely my top five for bosses in the game that I enjoy. And that is about it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, if you guys want to check out the join channel button, I just added added that you can see it at the bottom of the video if you ever want to support me extra it's definitely not necessary but it does help me out quite a bit feel free to click on that i just enabled it after all these years and yeah you guys gave me the idea because of all the generosity i've seen recently in the uh, last couple videos thank you again for that well until next time ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your time mr no sleep out